Hey everybody, I'm Christy Jordan with SouthernPlate.com and I've got you on my kitchen today. I'm about to can some tomatoes and I thought I'd just show you how to can tomatoes. Just show you step by step. Um, canning is really easy. There are two methods of canning that are safe, that have been tested safe. And that's water bath canning and pressure canning. Now, both of these methods have the exact same prep work in terms of preparing your jars, preparing your lids, preparing your food and such, and then getting it in the jars. The main difference is gonna be what you do with those jars after you get them filled with the lids and rings on. Um, so today I'm gonna to show you one of the two methods of safe canning, and that's water bath canning. This is something that anyone can do in your home. You just need a large pot and a dish towel and your canning jars, and that's pretty much it. Now, why I'm stressing there's two safe ways of canning is that there are countless unsafe ways of canning. It's very simple, the steps to canning safely. It's really as easy as one, two, three. Anybody can do it. Um, but so many people can using unsafe methods, um, dry canning, open kettle canning, I'll talk about that too. Um, sometimes people just put hot liquid in a jar and put the lid on and they say, well, it's sealed. Well, being sealed does not mean it's safe. Um, I can seal a lid on a jar. I can get a lid hot and put a hot liquid in the jar and when I twist that lid down, that's gonna create a vacuum and that's gonna seal. But the contents are not safe. Why is this important? Well, there's a thing called botulism. <laughs> um, and I laugh, it's no laughing matter. This is how you can end up killing your family, uh, literally. Um, canning is very easy, seriously. Today I'm gonna to show you, it's so simple. But by foregoing that 15 to 30 minutes of boiling those jars, processing those jars, you are creating a fertile environment for botulism to develop. Botulism, um, the bacteria flourishes in a low oxygen environment that is created in canning food. So it's important that we get those jars processed, that we get that temperature to where we need it to be for a minimum amount of time. And a simple thing such as a pot of boiling water can do that for us. So let me show you a few of the tools of the trade. And like I said, I'm gonna show you one of the two safe ways of canning. If I do not, <laughs> if, if it's not water bath canning done exactly as you're gonna see today or pressure canning, it is not safe. And I know grandma did it and it worked just fine. That's, that's kind of the defiant attitude. Well, grandma did it. Well, grandma did a lot of things. Um, <laughs> grandma rode around without a seatbelt on. Grandma didn't have um, sewage in her house or clean water. She drank water out of a creek. You know, a lot of things that grandma survived, we are not built with that hardy stuff. And um, some people didn't survive it. So let's talk to you a little bit about what we have today for safe canning. And this, seriously, if you've got a pot and you can boil water, you can safely can. So today, here's what I've got. I've got my tomatoes here. This is my messy kitchen. So these are, these are local tomatoes. Um, these two aren't. Um, so I've got my tomatoes here. I've got, this is handy. You don't have to have this. This is a cannon funnel. There's my my dog and my cantaloupe. Um, this is a cannon funnel. It just makes it so nice because when you've got these jars, um, I'll try to get a jar out here. Okay. When you got your jars, this is a lid, this is a ring. Um, so when you've got these jars and you're gonna fill it, you put that in there and that's gonna keep this from getting gunk all around it. We're gonna wash this a little bit before we um, process our jars because a lot of times if you don't wipe these lids, sticky residue will be there and that's harder to get your lid off when you're ready to consume your product. This is also real handy. Again, you don't have to have this. This is cannon tongs. I went years without these, but now that I got them, I sure do love them. And it's just gonna allow us to conveniently pick up our canning jar, put it in our canner. Since we're doing tomatoes, we want to make sure that we have a high enough acid in these because we're water bath canning them. Um, so low acid vegetables have to have something added to them. And that's going to, again, that's going to create an environment that is not conducive to botulism growth. This is a powdered citric acid. And we're just going to add a tiny bit to each jar, literally a quarter of a teaspoon to each jar. But you don't have to have this. You can also use just lemon juice if you got it at home. A tablespoon of bottled lemon juice will work just fine. Now this is my favorite thing. And this is discolored from reactions that I've, I've been canning a lot of stuff with it. This is a cannon ladle. Um, it'll sit on the side of my pot like that, so pretty and perfect. And then the, to this ladle holds eight ounces. 
So two of these littles will perfectly fill this jar. So it just makes it real easy when I go to fill my jars and stuff. Now we've got our jars. Um, oh, also, this is a great book. Um, if you're just looking for a general go-to. But you can also go to freshpreserving.com and get some great canning recipes there too. I do recommend you are um, careful about where you get your canning recipes. Because like I said, there are a lot of people who do not can safely. And they may not realize they can safely or they're going by the, it didn't kill my grandma, so it won't kill you. And you just want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're responsible for, for using the best practices when it comes to canning. So these are the jars I'm going to be using today. Just regular mouth pint jars. This is your kind of standard run-of-the-mill jar. Um, I want to show you also, these are beautiful. These are, this is the new series. They came out with these. I think two or three years ago they're coming out with a different color every year this is the this year's color it's for the anniversary and these are the green ones uh, well there they're beautiful the green and the blue are my favorite the purple are pretty this is actually a purple one i use a quart jar to drink tea out of um so that's all we gotta have now what am i doing first well let me go i'm going to switch this camera out and I'm actually going to put it on a chest mount I have so I can show you with both hands. So I will be right back. Okay, so I've got a pot of boiling water here. I've got to get the skins off these tomatoes. So I'm going to show you the easy way to do that. We're just going to start by taking the tomatoes and putting them in our pot of boiling water. And they're going to boil for a few minutes. Let me turn this up a little bit actually. They're going to boil for a few minutes and those skins are going to split open. And so I just go ahead and fill up this pot and I'll come back in just a second when these are split open. I'll show you what we're going to do next. This is the easy way to peel a tomato. While that's boiling, I want to show you what I'm using for canning today. Like I said, you can just use a deep pot with a dish towel on the bottom. Literally, like imagine this is a tall pot. How tall does it have to be? Well, it has to be tall enough to cover your jar by one inch. So if I'm using, this is a pint jar, 16 ounces, my pot needs to be this tall. So that's not bad. I mean, you've got to have water covering it by an inch, so it needs to be a little bit taller. Now this, you do not have to have this, but this is a um, Fresh Tech Ball Electric Canner. And they sent this to me and I fell in mad love with this thing. Um, you can also cook big batches of stew and stuff in it. And it has this great spigot over here. So I fill it up and then when I'm done, I can just kind of turn it around and drain that in my sink. Usually what I do is I let it cool completely then I just I open that spigot and use it to water my plants or something. But if this is a regular pot, you would fill it with water and take a dish towel and just lay it in the bottom, literally. And it would you know, sink down at the bottom. And then you just put your glasses right on top of that. It's no problem whatsoever. Um, you do need to make sure that your, your pot has a lid. It has to have a lid. A lid is going to, once this gets up to that boiling that you want it, nice bubbly boiling, and your jars are in there processing, that lid is gonna maintain that heat better for you. And you need that heat sustained, maintained, for a set period of time. Generally, it's 15 minutes for the half pint jars, 30 minutes for a pint jar. Your recipe will tell you how long to do it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and plug this sucker up here and get this going. Now, another thing you can do, you do and you do this with your regular pot, that's fine. This is gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up to high. Um, and your jars need to be sterilized and hot before you fill them. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take my jars and put them in there. This is coming to a bowl. This will also help me see if I have enough water and I may need to add some more water. And I'm gonna let them get nice and hot in there while my tomatoes are cooking. I don't have any pop skins just yet, but we should be getting there any minute now. Okay, I've got my jars in here. I'm estimating I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got about eight jars. <clears throat> I may end up needing nine, we'll see. Um, I'm bringing this up to a boil and this will boil very rapidly. So it'll get those jars nice and hot. It'll also sterilize them. And while I'm at it, I'm just gonna to toss my little lids down in here. These also need to be hot. Um, you just wanna make sure they're really clean. Now, if they're really, if you just take these out of the dishwasher, that is a way that you can process your jars. You can skip this step. If you just wash it in a really nice hot dishwasher, that'll be good for the lids and for this. And then you still wanna make sure your jars are hot before you put the hot liquid in it. So you wanna just put, like what I do is I'll just take 
this lid here. I don't need that lid on it. I'm just getting out of my way. I'll take a towel and boil some water and put my jars here and just put a little water in each one to get them nice and hot, you know, before I put my hot liquid. And I don't set them directly on a cold counter. Now, we've got one that's split here. You see this? See that skin split? So that's just gonna be real easy to come off. These are starting to split open now. Here's another one that's split. You find one, then you start finding all of them in there. And that's, this is the main reason why we do this boiling water. Oh, there's another one. It just makes it an easy way to get these. And you can also <laughs> beat them up a little. If you Sometimes you get a stubborn one and he just will not split. And you can just poke it a little and it'll split better for you. I got that one split there. I'm gonna do this until I get all my tomatoes done. Let me pop a few more tomatoes in here. Okay. Now while we're doing that, I wanna to talk to you a little more about lids and rings. As I was saying, um, this is your ring, this is your lid. Now you're gonna have both of these on here when you boil it. And you don't want this to be, I mean, you know how your husband sometimes does things like a vice grip and you can barely get it open. It just needs to be finger tight. You know, see that's fine. Where I can easily get it off, but you know, kind of tight. But now when it comes time to store in these things, let me show you some of the things I've canned here lately. This is a little canning cabinet here, let's see. Um, and you'll notice most of these, I might have missed one or two. Um, let's see. Trying to get my camera to work. Okay, you'll notice most of these do not have the rings on them. They do not need to have the rings on them because this, look, this is some tomato relish. You see how strong that is? I'm gonna have to pry that to get that open. I opened some salsa a while ago and it was all I could do to get the lid off. Now this, this is just some rice I put in here for storage. These are great for, and there's some dehydrated peaches up here. You know, some of these things are dry things that I just put in there. Um, and no, I did not do dry canning. Um, dry canning is just a way to seal the lid. It doesn't, you know, I mean, you can vacuum seal or something if you want, but it really doesn't make a difference. Beans or dried beans are gonna last 20, 25 years. I mean, they'll last a long time just in the jars. Uh, you notice these are all just kind of sitting on their own, single layer. I could save space if I tack these on top, but we don't want to do that. that. This is best practices for canning. This And the reason why is the same reason why we don't want to leave our rings on. Because if something happens and this seal breaks and that ring is still on it, that jar might get warmer again and it might seal again. So the, now, the insides have been compromised. The contents have been compromised and exposed to bacteria, odorless, tasteless bacteria such as botulism, and I'm not aware of it because I had this lid on it and so it's sealed again. See, this way, if I can pick these jars up by this seal, I know this jar is safe. These are some black-eyed peas, dried black-eyed peas I canned. There's more black-eyed peas in the purple jar. Um, and see? navy beans. I know these are safe because that seal is good. Now another thing, if I have this sitting on top of it and that seal opens or you know is compromised, then with that pressure on it, that'll probably seal back too. So this is the safe way to do it. You can pick out anything out of my cabinet. If it won't, if that seal is still good, this is all safe to eat. So there's some canning best practices. I usually save all of my rings, I'll just take them off and put them in a bag and put them in the garage until I need them again. Now also about these lids here, these are single use lids. A lot of people will tell you, you can use them multiple times. Oh, we we'll use them multiple times, all this stuff. Well, you can do a lot of things, <laughs> but they were not created with multiple use in mind, okay? Let me get them down here. So that's not best practices. You know, if you're in a, a grid down scenario where you've got a harvest coming in and you're trying to preserve it, preserve it, you don't have electricity, you don't have access to cannon lids and stuff, but you've got some cannon lids that have been used once and you wanna try them again. That's a different situation, okay? You can try it then, you're still taking a risk. Um, but as long as stores are near us and you can get a dozen, new lids in a box for like two dollars there is no excuse for reusing those lids and compromising your family's health so let's talk about what we've done so far we've got our water heating up 
So we're getting our jars hot. See, I'm just poking these a little bit to get them cracked. We're getting our jars hot. I've got my tomatoes in here boiling. Got them all cracked. And now I'm gonna let these cool for a little bit just so I can pull those skins off without burning the fire out of my hands. So let me go ahead and turn this off. Whoo, hope you're not getting steamy there. I'm gonna let these cool for a little bit, let my jars heat up. Then when we come back, we're gonna get some tomatoes diced up and we're gonna be, get ready and start putting them in jars and do some canning. Okay, so I'll let my tomatoes cool a bit. Let me turn a little light, it's kind of dark in this corner here. That'll help us some. Okay, now I've emptied my pot and I'm just gonna get these tomatoes nice and hot and chopped up in there. So, they're still a little hot because I'm not a patient person but my hands can handle it. You see, I'm just, I wanna cut this little top off here. Oh, hot. Okay, maybe I'm not as, I'm not as John Wayne as I'd like to be. Now, there's still a lot of tomato here, so <laughs> I don't wanna lose any of that. So I'll go and cut some of that off too and add that. It's gonna go in my pot and I'm gonna keep doing this. You see how this skins just, look, just comes right off skin just comes off. So I'm gonna keep doing this until I get all these done and the tomatoes into my pot here. Okay, I've got all my tomatoes done. This took me just a few minutes. This is actually, I've got them in a pot here. Turn some heat on. Let me turn it down a little. This is actually a, um, a tool used for chopping ground beef. So I am going to chop up these tomatoes a little bit. And I'm just, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda bring these just to a little boil. I just want them a little cooked so they're gonna be nice and hot when we go in the, when they go in the jar. You can see some of these are riper than others. They're cutting easy, some are being a little tough. So I'm just gonna keep chopping these up and I'm gonna bring this to a boil. Chopped them up real good. And just like that, they're ready. Um, I wanna give them a nice boil again. I've also taken most of my jars and lids out take my last jar out so you can kind of see how I do that. Carefully drain it. Of course, boiling water is hot. We should all know that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm laughing because it's sadly a lot of people don't. Common sense. You're responsible for your own common sense. Okay, I'm gonna get my scoop and my funnel and go over here. And we'll start with the first one. So I've got my nice boiling tomatoes. And this should fill my jar about halfway. There you go, look at that, perfect, halfway. Okay, so I want two of those. I wanna leave about a half inch of head space. And see that's a little too much, so I wanted to give me a spoon. I wanted to get this out of here. Ooh, actually, this is perfect. <laughs> this is perfect for scooping it out because actually it's going to scoop out some. I'll just put it right in there. And see, since I've got this funnel, this is protecting the rim and keeping it from getting dirty. So now I'll move it over to here. And I'm probably going to end up with more canning jars than I need, but I'd rather have more than have fewer. I'm going to do a little scoop per each so I can go back and kind of even up the juice that's left, you know. That juice in there is just tomato juice. So that's going to, I want that in my recipes just as much as I do these fresh tomatoes. Okay. Let me turn this eye off here. I've got me a brand new stove, like top of the line. Literally, it's it's the latest model. I had to wait for them to actually do um, start production of it to get it. It's a KitchenAid gas range. It's in my garage right now. It's probably going to be there for a couple of months. <laughs> I won it in a blog conference, and I chose. They let me choose whichever one I wanted, so I chose gas because I want gas. But I haven't had gas hooked up to the house yet. <laughs> so, okay. tomatoes in some of these. And 
And if you end up with one that doesn't have quite enough, see these are going to be really close. So I think these will be fine. But you know what? I want these to be a half inch headspace. So let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little bit of this boiling water here. Just a little. Top them off where I want them. And that's perfectly fine. I don't just spill half my water. Okay, now let me tell you what we need to add to these. At this point, to make each of these safe, we're going to need to either add a tablespoon of lemon juice or a quarter of a teaspoon of citric acid. This is what I have. You know, another thing, citric acid, uh, where is that? Here it is. Citric acid is uh, vitamin C is citric acid. You can actually can, you could crush vitamin C tablets into this, and I've done that before. So I'm just going to add this to every jar. So try to keep up with the jars you're working on. So I ended up with six pints. Now another thing I'm adding that you don't have to add, I just do it as a personal preference. I'm going to add a little bit of kosher salt. It's just another quarter teaspoon to each jar. You don't have to worry about stirring this because as we can these, it's... Um, each of these jars is actually going to become its own little pressure cooker. And so the contents are going to be bubbling and boiling and rolling around. So that'll get that mixed up in there good. So now let me show you another important step here. Hey, Katie. I'm almost done. Okay. I'll be done in just a, just a second. Okay. So I've got me a damp paper towel. And I'm going to go around each lid and each rim. I'll go around all the lids first, then go around the rims. Okay. And like I said, this is so we don't have anything interfering with this seal. And also, we don't want any stickiness around this rim because when we go to take our ring off, it's going to be sticky and nasty and it's just, you know, we just want it to be clean. So, put one of these on each one. I'm just drying it off a little, patting it dry. Now they do make rings like this that are meant for multiple uses. One of the brand names is Tadler um, Lids. And uh, they're much more expensive. I think they're more readily available overseas than they are here. So now I need to get my rings and we'll put these on. And we're just gonna finger tighten, you know, just like that. We don't, this is not a strongman competition here. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to put each of these in my canner. Okay, I've got my jars in here and I brought this up. It's, it's getting to a boil now. If you're using a pot with just a dish towel on the bottom, at this point you just want to bring it to a rolling bowl and add the lid on it. Since I'm using the electric canner, what I'm going to do now, this is a steaming rack that you can use for steaming vegetables, but we also use it when we're canning, we put it on top and it's going to help distribute the heat evenly, keep our jars in one place and just kind of help maintain that temperature we like. This is just one of the features of this, but you don't have to do this if you're just using a regular jar. Now, I'm in a regular pot. I'm going to go ahead and put my lid on now and this is going i gotta wait till this comes to a full rolling boil and then that is going to be when my processing time of 35 minutes starts 35 minutes is the processing time for a pint jar for this particular recipe and so i've just got i've got this up to canning and i've got to wait and I'm gonna go work on these videos, on these clips and get them together while I wait on this to come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, I will then start my processing time. Okay, we're back. Um, this was at a full rolling boil for 35 minutes. And then I turned it off and let it cool just slightly. Now I'm pulling out my tomatoes and you'll see some liquid in. That's actually tomato juice. Um, so that's just gonna enhance my recipes. 
And this is about what the amount of tomatoes that you'd find in a can of store-bought tomatoes, only they're gonna taste better. And what I like to do with all this water is I let it, I'm gonna let this cool completely, and then I'm gonna empty it into gallon jugs and use it to um, water my plants outside. So you'll see this still has some give. That one's already sealed. You'll start hearing them pop soon, and that's how you know they're sealed. Um, 24 hours later, so tomorrow morning, I'm going to check these. <laughs> I've been getting into, we've been getting into the salsa tonight. Um, 24 hours from now, I'm going to check these and make sure that they're all sealed properly. And see, that doesn't have any give to it. This one does. So if they're not all sealed properly, then you can either recan them. So I would take the lid off, take the ring off and take the lid off, wipe the, the rim again with a paper towel, put a new lid on it and re reprocess it in a water bath. Or I can just put that in the fridge and just use it up in the next week. You know, that's usually what I do. I've actually never, I've really only had maybe one or two in the whole history of canning not work, not get sealed properly. And that's mainly because there's usually there's some kind of debris that you didn't wipe off there. So anyway, those are my beautiful tomatoes. Let me show you some other tomatoes I have over here that I canned last week. I've got a dish rag in the floor. Um, where are my tomatoes? Here's some tomatoes. I canned these last week. So see, they'll be a little bit of distributed. Right now, you see all the water in the bottom of these, but they'll be a little bit of distributed like that. Once they cool, and when they're cool, I'm gonna take the ring off, just like I did that one, and then I'm gonna store them in a nice, cool, dark place and have fresh canned tomatoes. Um, another thing I like to do with my tomatoes is I like to dehydrate them and make tomato chips. Those are delicious. And you can reconstitute, or reconstitute, re I'm looking at messes. You can reconstitute um, dehydrated tomatoes and, and put them in soups and stews as well. So we're gonna add to our canning cabinet here. And I hope this found, you found this review or tutorial helpful. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to holler at me. Leave me a comment below. I'll leave you some helpful links to some great websites for safe canning recipes and a link to this electric bath canner if you'd like to see also some of these beautiful canning jars and so y'all can just look at all those and don't forget to pick up your ball preserving guide and I will leave a link to that as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. I love y'all. Have a wonderful day and put up something good today. <laughs> We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.